Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Nexus 6P on the developer preview of 7.1.1, namely the NPF 10C to the new and pretty much the release candidate of Android 7.1, which is the NPF 26F. So we'll be showing you how to update that using Fastboot this time. I know I've been using Fastboot a lot uh, for the past few videos, but I miss typing all those things. But anyway, uh, we'll get started. So you can use FlashFire alternatively and to do this, or even Flash the OTA and TWRP. I'm still a little bit old school to try that, so we'll try that maybe later, someday. But uh, we'll be using Fastboot. So just remember, um, I'm not sure if there's a bootloader update, but we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, to get started, we're gonna go over to our computer here, and we're gonna need to download a few things as usual. We're gonna need to download the Android Tools zip file, which is just pretty much the, flat, uh, the platform tools. Um, so that just contains your ADB fastboot uh, executables as well as the DLLs required to use those. So that, that's very basic. I just have a folder here and this is what you should have. It's just version 1.0.32 and if you already have that you don't need to download this. But anyway, so uh, next up we need to download the factory image for this. Now this is available on the developer.android.com website and basically just download the one for Angular and once you have downloaded that, so not too big, about yeah, 1.3 gigabytes. Uh, download that as well. And the last thing we want to download is the latest version of SuperSU. So that is what we have downloaded now, SR5. So we've downloaded all of our three files here needed for the this process. So what we're going to do first up is extract our Android Tools zip, just like that. Drag all those files out, and we're going to open the Angular, the factory image, and we're going to open this folder. And then from here, we are going to check out some of this, some of these details. So we're going to extract the bootloader and radio images outside like that. We're going to open up the image zip file inside, and this will take a while to extract to a temporary directory. Now we'll check if the bootloader needs updating. If not, we can skip those files to be flashed. But I haven't checked yet, so I'm going to check when we go into the bootloader. Now from here, we want to extract the root image, the system image, and the vendor image. So I'm going to drag those three outside as well. Now this will take some time, so I'm going to do some, uh, actually I can't really multitask here at this point. I'm going to wait for this to finish. And once this does finish, we're going to plug in our device and copy over that latest version of SuperSU. And of course we are done now. We can close this and we can also close this and this is what remains. So now we're going to copy the latest version of SuperSU over to our, our computer. So what we're going to do is plug in our device like so, unlock it and change the, well, the USB mode from charging to transfer files as usual and now we can just head over back to our computer here, refresh this, okay, never mind, we'll just go find it again, and it's gone. There we are, just reset, uh, I just checked the option again on the phone, and close this. So, we can remove these two, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, and we're going to copy the SuperSU, the latest one, to our device. To copy it, uh, or you can drag it over until it says copy to root of storage and not over any of these folders. So you can find it just on the root of the SD card. And not this again. Oh no. Let me just try a different USB port. Or in fact, a different USB cable. Let's just try this again. Yeah, there we go, it worked. Um, yeah, so once it's copied over, we can now pretty much go into the bootloader and start flashing things away. So once we've got things uh, copied over, and well, I'll explain a couple of things while we power off and disconnect the USB cable for a moment. Uh, if you've installed the assistant or changed the build prop 
this will be reset so you'll just have to change the build prop entries or use that get assistant app and do it all for you again and also if you have installed the pixel like navigation bar mod as well as the google launcher well not google launcher pixel launcher to the system uh, partition that those things will be removed as well so you're gonna have to reflash that zip i'm not sure if you can do it straight after uh, going into TWR, TWRP and doing it or if you want to wait until after the first boot and then reboot back into the recovery and do it but um, I haven't got those mods installed just the assistant app or the assistant mod um, so I can just do that you just have to do that after you flash the images and boot up and yep so we're gonna reboot our phone into the recovery and that is done by holding power and volume down at the same time and once you're in this screen you can plug back in uh, the USB cord. So the bootloader here is 03.62 and the baseband, which is the radio, is 0.375. So it looks like we we need to update our radio and that's it. Because the, oh no, 6, yeah, 6.2. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna update our radio in this case. So you could do this all in Flashfire pretty much because you can update the radio through Flashfire as long as you check a certain setting within flash fire settings to allow you to flash to a protected partition. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our computer and we're gonna do some some nice split screen stuff. I'll leave a little bit more space. So now we're gonna um, interact with our phone using Fastboot. So I'm gonna open up a new command prompt window here in our directory. So make sure nothing is selected as much and then hold shift and right click in an empty space. And then you just wanna click on open command window here. Now once that is open, uh, I might make this a little bit bigger, just so we can see it better. Okay, so first up we're going to type in, uh, let's see, we're going to check out devices in Fastboot, always a good thing to check. So we're going to type in Fastboot devices, and that should return with our serial number. Now pretty much skip the step of installing drivers but I assume you already have done that since you have rooted your phone before or you flashed images before in your device. So now since our device has been detected by the computer successfully we're going to flash the radio image which requires updating so we're going to type in flash boot, flash radio, leave a space on the end like so and then drag in the radio image onto the command prompt window and hit enter and that'll flash quite quickly and then we're going to start flashing the other images. So we're going to flash the boot image. Type in fast boot, flash boot. Leave a space on the end here. Drag in the boot image and hit enter. Next up, we're going to flash the system image. So we're going to type in fast boot, flash system. Leave a space on the end. Drag in our system image. Hit enter. Now this will take approximately a minute and a little bit uh, due to its size. So we're just going to leave it and it should do its job just fine. I'm going to fast forward till this finishes and we're going to flash the vendor image right after. Alrighty, so it just took about 103 seconds and that equates to about a minute and a half, pretty much, a little bit longer. So we're going to flash the vendor image now. I'm going to type in fastboot, flash vendor. Leave a space on the end as usual. And we're going to drag in our vendor image and hit enter. This one take nearly as long as it's only about 200 megabytes. So once that finishes, we're going to boot straight into TWRP. And we are. So we're going to go back to our device now. We're going to go down to uh, recovery mode and then hit the power button. And that'll take us to the recovery, the TWRP of course, where we are going to flash the or SuperSU to reroute our device. Now here you might want to flash your mods that you've had on the previous developer preview. Of course make sure they're updated for the second developer preview of Android 7.1 as uh, if you flash something older it will probably not boot up properly. So we're gonna, it's almost done. Okay, so we are going to swipe to allow modifications and then we are going to tap on install, scroll all the way down to our SuperSU that we copied over and we're going to swipe to confirm flash. 
Now this will flash a systemless root um, that will patch our boot image as well. So quite important that we flash the boot image uh, prior. So it's almost done. And there we are. So of course, as per normal, it will go into maybe two or three boot loops. By, but by the end, it should turn itself on quite properly. So we're going to tap on Reboot System now, and we're going to fast forward until we get to the home screen, pretty much. Okay, so our device has just finished booting up, and we are we are in beta program. Yep. Okay. Okay, so finishing Android update, so I guess that is where it rebuilds the what was it? The art runtime for everything or something like that. Okay, so we'll, while we wait for that to finish, we can verify that we are on the NPF twenty six F. That's a little hard to see, so I'll just hop into settings and about phone. I don't think too much has changed, but um except for our, of course, model. So here we are on the NPF 26F, and to see that we are rooted, we are going to open up, but uh, on a titanium backup. There we are. All done. And we can also see that SuperSU is installed, and everything works as normal. So there we go, guys. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'll try my best to help you out. And if you have any further suggestions, feel free to leave them on the, the subreddit there so I can keep track of it as well, which is also linked down in the more info. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next one.